Um, in the first couple of videos in module three, we'll study the basic concept of simple linear regression, um, including um, calculating the slope and y-intercept and uh, interpret those values. Interpret assessment measures, how well linear regression line explains the data and the confidence intervals and prediction intervals for response rate. Uh, we will run linear regression in R and obtain necessary values to explain the data. At last, we'll check on the linear regression assumptions to see what we have done is reliable. Recall the roller coaster data again. Roller coaster enthusiasts uh, value faster roller coasters as more thrilling. We wonder if as the higher maximum height of the roller coaster, the faster the maximum speed of the roller coaster. You can see the screenshot of our data with columns of the maximum height of the roller coaster in feet. Here's the height. Um, and the maximum speed of the roller coaster in miles per hour is the speed. To visually investigate the relationship between the maximum height and the maximum speed of the roller coaster, we first draw scatter plot using ggplot command. Um, axis notation we typically use for explanatory or independent variable, and y is for response or dependent variable. Often, we are interested in if y depends on uh, x. Other cases, we will be simply interested in the relationship between X and Y. Uh, notice in the AES in the ggplot command that we put maximum height as X and the maximum speed as Y here. If you copy and paste the code in the gray box with uh, three lines um, and paste it in our, our studio, our studio generates the scatter plot on the right bottom corner. Um, do you see if the maximum speed is related to maximum uh, height? So maximum height is that, do you see any relationship, potential relationship? What kind of relationship do you see if there is any? It is not too hard to see there is a tendency as the maximum height goes higher, the maximum speed also tends to go higher. Uh, from the upward straight line there, uh, we can also see that there are some uh, variation in the tendency. There are some variation there. For the next uh, a few slides, uh, we'll quickly review the theory of the simple linear regression. On this slide, we'll uh, see uh, simplified, in other words, fake uh, version of scatter plot of X and Y with potentially positive relationship. So this is a uh, simplified version of uh, scatter plot. Here's your X and here's Y. And the blue dots are the data set. And um, uh, we didn't really uh, specify the notation for each dot. But those are, uh, you can see there are pairs of x1, y1, x2, y2, and so on and so on. And there are n number of sets and pair number of sets there. Our first goal is to find out, um, let me see, for the Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. Our first goal is to find out this pink trend line, this pink trend line um, that explains the data with a simple straight line. From a basic algebra, we know that the straight line equation is that the response variable y is equal to uh, y-intercept plus slope times explanatory variable. 
Here we have the same format uh, with beta naught as a y intercept and beta one as slope. Um, these beta naught and beta one are parameters. Typically, we deal with sample with a subset of population data sample. We can estimate uh, those betas. Uh, those estimates, we call it beta naught hat and beta one hat. Uh, y is actual uh, y value on the beta piece. So those are the actual y values. These are y values. Uh, the y value on the line, on the other hand, right there on the line, is an estimate based on the beta naught hat and beta one hat and x value. Thus, we use the notation y hat here. So these are the y hat value of this value is depending on beta naught hat plus beta one hat times x. Here is one more review of simple linear regression setup. We call true model as y equal beta naught plus beta one times x plus epsilon. If we go back to the last slide once more, we, we can see that real y uh, for a particular point uh, can be explained or calculated by a deterministic component. So this particular y can be explained for the particular x deterministic component, which is this much of the data point. Um, and there is some error component, the part that you cannot really explain with the line. Uh, in the figure deterministic part y hat is y value on the line, and the rest of them, the difference between y and y hat is called the error. With a sample data, beta dot hat and beta one hat can be estimated, and y can be also estimated using this beta dot hat and beta one hat. The fitted model is y hat equals two beta one hat, a beta dot hat uh, plus beta one hat times x. This is your fitted model. This is your true model. We will all know that y is response variable, x is predictor variable, beta naught, beta one, those are parameters, and then we can estimate those based on our data. Okay, now uh, we'll talk about how we can estimate beta naught and beta one. Of course, we can draw a whole bunch of different random lines uh, that looks like fitting the data. Day. You can go like a little bit like that. You can go a little bit like that. Um, but the question is, what mathematical way you can use to find the best fitted linear regression model? Uh, one of the most common uh, estimating method is called the least square method. Least square method is to find beta naught hat and beta one hat that minimize the sum of the squared residual. So what that means. In the figure, we see uh, epsilon or e, these right here, is uh, the difference between actual y and the fitted value y hat. The idea is that the best fitted line will minimize those errors collectively. So oh, there are a whole bunch of errors that we can uh, think of all those, uh, for all those data points. And the line, the best line will be minimize those errors. In other words, the best fitted line will minimize the sum of the residuals. Um, unfortunately, mathematically, the sum of the residual uh, y minus y hat, if you just simply do the summation of all those e, which is y minus y hat, is always equal to zero, as long as a line goes to uh, in the middle of the data. Uh, since some of the y values are above the fitted line, so these are above the fitted line, and these are the uh, below the fitted line. So if you do the simple y minus y hat, y hat, these values will have a plus values, and these values will have a, a negative values. If you just sum up, it will be actually always sum to zero. So we'll need some other way to minimize the errors collectively. Think about this for a second before we uh, move to the next video. 